last proverb because a lot of people say, oh, I would never strike my child with a belt or with uh, a switch or something of that sort. I love him too much. Well, this says, if you withhold that kind of discipline when it's needed and when you're under control, then you don't love the child, you hate him. Now, in chapter 23, verses 13 and 14, we get an even more strict instruction. He says, do not hold back discipline from the child. Although you strike him with a rod, he will not die. You shall strike him with a rod and rescue his soul from hell. And finally, Proverbs 29, verse 15, the rod and reproof give wisdom. But a child who gets his own way brings shame to his mother. The Apostle Paul also writes about the family's importance and centrality. In Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 4, he says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment, with a promise, so that it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. When a child is raised with a consistent father and mother, he becomes an asset and a blessing to his society, and he can live a full and useful life. Now, I realize that all of this goes totally contrary to what parents are taught today in this age of Dr. Spock and the impact of modern psychology, so-called. But you know something? Man's nature hasn't changed, and neither has God's word about a child's need for correction, because that nature is the same as it was when God wrote these Proverbs. One of the signs Paul gives as a cause of the perilous times predicted for the end of this age is that children would be in rebellion. It says, disobedience to parents. And as the family breaks down, the child tends to perpetuate the breakdown into the next generation. And after a few generations, the whole nation begins to fall apart with lawless, lawlessness and crime. Jails cannot hold the number of criminals. <laughs> Does this sound familiar? The fourth divine institution is the sanctity of life. God severely judged Cain for the murder of his brother, but God spells out the reason for the sanctity of life in Genesis chapter 9 more explicitly. The Bible says, Surely I will require your lifeblood from every beast I will require it, and from every man, from every man's brother, I will require the life of man. Whoever sheds man's blood, by man his blood shall be shed. For it's in the image of God he made man. Now note carefully that human life is sacred because mankind is made in the image of God. In this divine declaration, the ultimate authority for human government is given. It is the responsibility of a duly organized court of fellow humans to execute the person that has deliberately taken the life of another human. And this is done at the command of God because that human that was murdered was in his image. Even an animal that kills a human being is to be put to death. This is not some judgment for primary purpose of crime prevention, but because a person who is in the image of God has been killed. The Bible recognizes that someone can accidentally kill another person. In fact, in the Old Testament, Israel was commanded to set up cities of refuge. And cities of refuge were designated to prevent revenge killings in such cases. This aspect of the law does have an effect on crime of murder. And it does prevent the murder from getting out and killing again. In fact, the Bible doesn't leave the option of life in prison. It says someone who is deliberately murdered should be put to death. And this commandment is not annulled in the New Testament, as some try to say. 
Jesus himself said in Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 and 22 in the Sermon on the Mount, You have heard that the ancients were told, You shall not commit murder. And whoever commits murder shall be liable to the court. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be guilty before the court. And whoever says to his brother, You good for nothing, shall be guilty before the Supreme Court. And whoever says, You fool, shall be guilty enough to go into fiery hell. Far from annulling the commandment about capital punishment, Jesus taught that in God's sight, hatred towards someone is considered murder and breaking that law, because hatred is the root of source of murder. If it's not controlled by the restraint of society, it would result in murder. This is apparent when a disaster strikes and law and order breaks down. The law of the jungle takes over because of the fallen nature of man. As we will see, nothing else in American society is more inconsistently handled than this divine institution. The sanctity of the life of a whale is more important to some liberals than the life of a baby. When respect for the sanctity of life breaks down, the society is headed for destruction in a hurry. And as the society declines, it becomes an extremely dangerous place to live. The fifth divine institution is the nation. In Genesis chapter 11, God revealed why he is against one world government. In the days before the incident at the Tower of Babel, the whole world spoke one language. A mighty dictator arose who was defiant against God. His name was Nimrod, which means, we will revolt. He led all of civilization into a false religion based on astrology. He defied God's order for mankind to spread out and fill the earth. Instead, Nimrod organized them into one society around a false religion. They built an astrological observatory called, that we call the Tower of Babel on the plains of Shinar which is in what we call modern Iraq. This was their rallying point in defiance of God. Here's God's judgment about this situation. Genesis chapter 11 verse 6 says, The Lord said, Behold, they're one people, and they all have the same language, and this is what they began to do. And now nothing which they purpose to do will be impossible for them. The point of this divine institution is that God recognizes that mankind has a fallen nature. So the best way to keep that nature from being organized into evil through the leadership of a one-world dictator is to set up checks and balances so that not all nations will fall under control of an evil leader at the same time. Just suppose the whole world would have been under German government when Hitler took power. The concentration of power into the hands of a few always ends in tyranny. As it has been rightly said, power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. God is a realist and understands the corruptibility of man's fallen nature. So once again, these divine institutions were given for the sake of all mankind. You've been watching the Hal Lindsey Report. To support this program, send your tax-deductible gift to Hal Lindsey Media Ministries, P.O. Box 470-470, Tulsa, Oklahoma, 74147. You can also support this ministry online. Visit hallindsey.com or call 1-888-RAPTURE. <laughs>